Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and today it's time for me to make one of my favorite dishes from one of my favorite cuisines. Now, you've seen a lot of my videos, and it's been quite some time since I've done something of my favorite cuisine of all, Chinese food. Go figure, a Jewish boy from Long Island who loves Chinese! Honestly, I can live, eat, and breathe this stuff. So, I'm going to make today, I've made beef and broccoli before using a different recipe, and this time I'm going to be using chicken and broccoli and making my own recipe, which I am so excited to do because frankly, I feel like it is top notch, home run, hit it out of the ballpark, awesome. And I think you guys are gonna absolutely love it, especially if you love chicken and broccoli. So guys, let's just get going right to the Instant Pot. You're gonna see how easy it is, how quick it is, and how absolutely fantastic it is. Let's go. Like so many recipes do, let's start with one medium yellow onion and dice it up. Let's take a bunch of scallions and slice them up. And look at that, it formed into kind of a little bit of a heart there. Oh, I love you. And now let's take between one and a half to two pounds of a thinly sliced chicken breast. You can see here, it's very thin, just like this. And if you don't have it like this in your supermarket, you can ask your butcher to slice it that thin for you, or you can just take a breast and slice it that thin yourself. But what we basically want to do now is with each of these chicken breasts that are already sliced thin, is we want to cut them into bite-sized pieces. So it's nice and cut up into little bite-sized strips just like this. Got it? Okay, let's move on to the Instant Pot and wash your hands first. So to the pot, let's add in two tablespoons of vegetable oil and three tablespoons of sesame oil. Doesn't matter if it's toasted or regular. So let's come down to the Instant Pot and hit the saute function and adjust so we're on the more or the high setting and we wanna give it some heat to get that oil nice and heated up for about three minutes in the pot. And I also want to add in one tablespoon of Shaoqing cooking wine. This is like a Chinese rice wine, or you can just use rice wine that's regular, or you can even use cooking sherry if you have that. That's fine too. But if you can get Shaoqing cooking wine, that's great. A lot of Asian markets have it, or even some aisles in your supermarket that are international might carry it. And again, I'm adding one tablespoon of it. Now you're gonna see the pot's gonna start to bubble and sizzle. And now we want to add in our scallions and our onion. And let's stir that around in the pot for about two minutes. And after about two to three minutes of the onions and scallions cooking in the oil, it's gonna become a little bit soft and translucent. And now's our cue to add some garlic. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of crushed garlic. And let's stir that around in the pot and let that cook for another minute. It'll become pretty fragrant once it's stirred in. All right, and after about a minute of the garlic cooking with the onions and the scallions, it's time to add in our chicken. Now let's just stir our chicken around in the pot until it becomes just ever so lightly white on the edges. We do not want our chicken to be cooking right now completely at all. That's what the pressure cooking is for. Just give it a stir in the pot for about a minute until all the edges are just lightly white in color. There can still be some pink showing through, that'll be fine. And after about a minute of stirring my chicken around in the pot, you're gonna see it's lightly white in areas and still pink in others. That's perfect, because now we're gonna add in our hoisin sauce. Yes, hoisin sauce is so incredibly delicious. It's like a plum sauce. I'm gonna add in a quarter of a cup. And I'm gonna to toss that around with my chicken. So we're looking like this. Marvelous. Okay, now let's add in some broth. A cup of beef broth. I'm actually using low sodium beef broth for this. As well as a quarter of a cup of low sodium soy sauce two tablespoons of oyster sauce, but don't worry, it doesn't actually taste like oysters. And lastly, I'm gonna add in two packed tablespoons of a dark or light brown sugar. And let's stir everything around in the pot real good. Make sure any onions or chicken that might be stuck to the sides from stirring gets into the center, and then just toss everything around. Make sure everything gets nice and coated, and then we're ready to cook, guys. It's as simple as that. And we're not adding our broccoli just yet because we want our broccoli to be a little substantial. If we add it in now, it's gonna become very, very, very mushy and fall apart, which is fine if you wanna do that, but I'm gonna show you how to do the broccoli next up. So let's secure the lid. Make sure we're in sealing position. Now let's come down to our pot and hit the keep warm or the cancel button. And we wanna hit the pressure cook or manual button. And we wanna go for four minutes, guys, on this, on high pressure. Four minutes on high pressure, and that's it. 
Now, while my chicken is cooking in the pot, I want to prepare my broccoli. And we're not adding the broccoli to the pot while it's cooking because it's going to become very mushy and it's not going to have really any substance to it. Now, if you want your broccoli super mushy and for it to fall apart into the sauce, by all means, feel free to cook it with the chicken. But because I want mine a little more substantial with a little bit of a crunch, I'm going to just simply pop this in the microwave with a little bit of water and steam it. So let's take a nice head of broccoli or two like this, however much you want to use, and then just rip the little florets off the crown of the broccoli just like that. So they're in pieces just like so. And for that stalk that we ripped all the broccoli off of, you can just toss it or eat it or feed it to an animal, whatever you want to do. And now let's take a quarter cup of water and just pour it over our broccoli. It's gonna give it some steam. And then take a lid or a plate, whichever, doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be securely on top either. And we're gonna pop this in the microwave between three to four minutes until the broccoli is nice and steamed and a little bit tender. And there you go, in the microwave, and I'm going to put you in there for three minutes. Okay, and we're done cooking, so let's take our broccoli out of the microwave. And be careful when you remove that lid, because steam's going to come out. And look at that, guys. Perfect steamed broccoli. Just how I like it. Just try out a little piece and make sure it's to your liking. And if it's still a little too strong for you or firm, just throw it back in the microwave for another minute or two. But this is going to be perfect, especially when we mix it in with our sauce in the end and it becomes even a little more warmed up and a little softer. Time's up, so we're ready to do a quick release. And the pin just dropped, so that means the lid now comes off. And there's our chicken. And now let's hit the cancel button again, and then hit the saute button again. And we want to leave it on the more or the high setting and let our sauce bubble up a little bit. Now we're going to want to thicken our delicious sauce up, and a secret to do that is by creating a cornstarch slurry. And to do that, you take equal parts cornstarch and water. So I'm taking two tablespoons of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water and mix it together until it goes from a cement-like consistency into a nice and smooth one. And there we have it. And now that our sauce is bubbling, let's add in our cornstarch slurry. And now let's also immediately stir that in with the sauce because this is gonna be the thickening agent, like I said, and it's gonna thicken it up to be perfect. Not super thick, but it's not gonna be runny either. And it pretty much thickens up almost immediately. Look at this, it's almost more of a gravy consistency now, which now means we're ready to add in our broccoli. So let's add that to the pot. And let's stir everything up and make sure the broccoli gets nice and combined with all the sauce and all the chicken. And it's gonna be one big happy family in here. Perfect. Let's just let this cook in here and bubble for about another minute. And this, my friends, is going to be fantastic. And then let's come back to the pot and turn it off by hitting keep warm or cancel again, or the keep warm slash cancel button, depending on your model. This is all ready to serve. Let's put it in a serving dish and then serve it up. There we go. Make sure we get plenty of chicken and broccoli in there. Mm, look at all that chicken and broccoli. We are not skimping out here, guys. And then drizzle over a little bit more of that amazing sauce, which is the perfect consistency. And there we have it, guys, looking absolutely beautiful and totally ready to serve. Let's dig in. And here we go, guys. I put some in a bowl, and we're gonna try it out right now. Start with some chicken first. <laughs> it's so good, my glasses are fogging up. Do you see this? They're fogging up. Oh, Matt, let me try some of the broccoli. Spot on. The broccoli has that perfect crunch to it, just what you'd want. So I'm a New Yorker, I live in New York City, and I have some really, really good Chinese food at my fingertips. The neighborhood that I live in, Astoria, doesn't have the greatest Chinese food. It's almost a step above Panda Express, if that makes any sense. Although I shouldn't knock Panda Express because I totally eat it whenever I'm in LA. I just have this weird fix, it's like I'm pregnant or something, and I have to get like their like bourbon or honey chicken or whatever they got. You know, that typical generic thing that you get at mall food courts. And with all due respect, I am not knocking Panda Express because I'm like, when I I see one in LA or in the airport food court or whatever when they give them the free samples of that bourbon or orange chicken. Who am I to kid? I'm gonna take three of them and pretend I'm wearing a disguise each time, you know? So I like the stuff, but the stuff in Astoria is like a step above. Now this chicken and broccoli is even better than a lot of the places around here. The flavor is perfect. It's perfect. It has an amazing mix of some sweet and savory in there. It's that great brown sauce. You're certainly not gonna be wanting for any sauce. There's plenty of it and it coats the chicken and the broccoli beautifully. Mm. And I'm telling you, sometimes you like your broccoli mushy, but sometimes you want it with a little crunch. And this right here has got it. This is Captain Crunch broccoli right here. I love it. It's perfect. Mm. 
It's amazing, all I need is a fortune cookie now. Oh wait, here's one, let's open it. Your chicken and broccoli is the best I've ever had. Oh, isn't that sweet? You're such a good fortune. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go back to eating more of this stuff. It's delicious, it's not on the heavy side, it's really, really quite good. And you can use reduced sodium soy sauce and broth, which I use, and it really, really works well on there. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, and for even more recipes, I have no idea how many I have at this point, but it's about 150 or so, go to PressureLuckCooking.com. Every single recipe has a video, just like this one, easy to follow. And you can also go to Facebook.com slash PressureLuckCooking and like the page for any time a new recipe drops, or any tips, or humor, or up updates on anything in general, check that out and like that page. And that pressure luck to subscribe to me on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. And by the way, you can hover over any recipe on PressureLuckCooking.com and then pin it to any board on Pinterest you want so you can try it later. How great is that? So good fortune to all of us when you have this chicken and broccoli.